What's going on guys and welcome back to Project Cars 2 in the Ice Track Trials series. Today we're up to episode 7. Yes, this series is still going on. I'm enjoying this series. You guys seem to be enjoying this series. So we're still going with it. We're now up to episode 7. Today, of course, we have three new cars to tackle the Mercedes-Benz Ice Track. And we start off today with the Ferrari 488 Challenge. Now this car was added for free just a couple of days ago actually to Project Cars 2 so I thought what better thing to do than to take it on the ice track. I mean obviously we're not going to get a, a really great idea of how this car usually would drive on you know a, rate, a proper racetrack but you know this is how we do things here on the game loop. We take cars um, in in places where they're not supposed to be really going so that's why they were taking this on the ice track now this is of course a ferrari 488 um, made into a race car i don't exactly know what sort of spec this car is um it seems when you look at the specs it seems quite a bit quicker than a gt3 car we already have a 4, 488 gt3 car so um i don't really know i don't know if this is like in its own class or what but um maybe it's maybe it's more part of the gt oh what is it what GTE is it? I think it's the GTE class. Maybe it's more in that sort of thing. I don't really know, but um, I really do actually quite like the look of this car. Um, I think I prefer. Well, I do prefer the look of this over like you know a 488 GT3 car. Um, there's just something about the front of it that I really quite like. The way the lights look, the way the front bumper looks, that I do quite like about this car. Now we've got to talk about how it drives on the snow and ice, of course. Um, and you know what? All things considered, it's actually not too bad. Um, you know, it's a race car, so we're not going to have the greatest of grip. However, I don't have to be too cautious, you know. I, I have to be a little bit cautious with putting the power down and, you know, turning too tight into some corners. But all things considered, you know, considering what sort of car it is, it's actually not that bad. It, um, it really did, you know, it really did deal with this kind of a lot better than I thought actually um you know it's a pretty powerful car I can't exactly remember how much horsepower it's in the five or six hundreds I think um and it is you know a full-on race car really so to have it actually drive as good as it did around this track was pretty surprising it was a nice drive it didn't take me too long to get a good run out of it next up we have something that's definitely more suited to this sort of thing we have the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo X the Evolution X Evolution 10 whatever you want to call it um, this is the newest and the last version of the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution. It's a very, very good car, and of course this is much more suited to this sort of track. Now it is only a road car, this isn't a rally car, it's, I believe it's in the road E class, so you know, we're fairly far down in the roads. Um, I don't know if you've had another road E car go actually, I've had a couple of road G cars go, but um, this may be the first road E, but um, yeah, of course this is all wheel drive, it's a Mitsubishi Lancer, of course it's going to be all wheel drive, um, and like I said, even though it's not a rally car, this basically could be a rally car, so it deals with this track very well. Um, one of the only cars, can, you know, including the rallycross cars, where you can actually be flat out through most bits. You know, I actually wouldn't drive this much differently here to what I would drive a race car at a racetrack. Um, because the thing is, this car just, because it's all-wheel drive and because it's, you know, it's got the higher suspension, the higher ride height, um, it is kind of made for this sort of thing, even though it is still a road car. It actually deals with things very well, and also because it doesn't have crazy horsepower like the Rallycross cars do that I've had on this series so far. You know, with those Rallycross cars, yes, you can be a hell of a lot more um, crazy with them than you can be with the race cars and stuff, and most road cars. But, you know, because they do have a lot of power, you still have to be quite careful putting on the power because they, you know, the turbos really spool and you get some horrible, horrible wheel spin. Whereas with this, because this doesn't have crazy turbos, because it doesn't have a crazy amount of horsepower, you can actually be really, really quick with this thing. I mean, you can probably tell by watching it, especially coming from that Ferrari, I can really throw this thing around. I can get the power down. And altogether, even though the, the Mitsubishi Lancer is only in the Road E class, um, pretty far down, it's still a very, very quick car around this snowy course. Then finally, I thought we'd go for something a little bit ridiculous to end on. It's the Porsche 917 slash 10. Um, now this thing was, uh, introduced it was added in the Porsche Legends pack which came out a couple of weeks ago um, 
and it's a pretty ridiculous thing. It has 1,000 horsepower, which is ridiculous. All that 1,000 horsepower as well going through the rear wheels. So I thought, you know, after doing the Mitsubishi and that being a pretty easy car to drive, I thought I'd give myself a bit of a challenge. And, um, yeah, a bit of a challenge this was. Um, this may be the hardest car I've ever driven around this course. Now, I've had some cars that have been pretty damn slidey. Um, looking at my list, I mean, I mean, for instance, the cars. The car that I first drove was a bit of a handful. The Aston Martin Vantage was actually a pretty... Um, a handful of a car and I mean of course the Formula Renault and the Formula X were pretty bloody difficult cars to get around here however this this is at a, on another league um, I pretty much couldn't touch the brakes throughout this whole course because if I did even slightly the car would spin um, I even had to be I mean you probably notice now I'm being so slow around these corners you see me have a little twitch there um, I wasn't really breaking into any corners because I was going so slow that I could just let off the throttle and kind of ease it around. And even doing that, if you let off the throttle too quickly, the car spins. It's ridiculous. And I can hardly go on the throttle at all because 1,000 horsepower going through rear wheels on snow and ice is a bit of a terrifying thing. Um, yeah, this, this thing was such a handful. I mean, you know, coming from that Mitsubishi, you can probably see how slow this run is. I know it's probably not the most interesting run in the world, but, you know, I mean, seeing a car like this on the snow and ice, this is a car from the 1970s, um, I believe, maybe 1980s, I'm not sure. Um, you know, it's not the sort of thing that you would really expect. So, you know, I'm, apparently I'm losing my voice a bit, oh god. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a ridiculous, ridiculous car. Um, and, yeah, I kind of, it took me quite a long time. Like I said, the Mitsubishi only took me a couple of runs, I tried to push it a bit too hard a couple of times, um, went off, so yeah, it took me a couple of runs. The Ferrari was the same, actually, it only took me two or three runs, whereas this, I restarted from the start line, probably about six times at least, and restarted throughout the course another few times, so um, it was a bit of a handful. Anyway, we go on to the times, and the quickest car of the day is the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo X, which is probably no surprise. Actually gets up into third place with a 156.440. It's very nice seeing another car under the one under the two minute mark. It actually beats the Audi V8 Quattro, which is a rally car, an old one, but it does beat it. Um, you know, we are down on the two rally cross cars, but um, yeah, a pretty damn good showing from that Mitsubishi. Um, we then go to the Ferrari 488 Challenge in 7th place, which is a very good position, with a 2 minutes 1.768. Yep, that, that Ferrari is pretty good. It's the second quickest rear-wheel drive car we've had so far, um, just losing out by 3 tenths on the Jaguar F-Type. That Ferrari was pretty good, you know, it beats the two Formula cars, beats the Lamborghini Veneno. Very, very good car around here, actually, all things considered. Um, probably the fa well, it is the fastest rear-wheel drive race car, so that's something. And then we have to go all the way into 21st place, dead last, for the Porsche 917 with a 232.219. I never thought something was going to go slower than the uh, than the SMS cart, but it did. The Porsche goes slower than the cart, and we have a new last place. So there we have it guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed, please go ahead, like, and subscribe, comment what other cars you'd like to see on the Ice Track Trial Circuit, and I'll see you guys in the next video.